What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and today we are starting the ECM swap. As you can see, I've got the passenger side wheel well off, tire, all that jazz. I have the ECM pulled. This is that uh, special ECM that was in the 2006 and prior XLRs that had the wideband capability and here's our E67 that we're going in. So stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. Welcome back to Project Country Club. We're finally doing the ECM swap. So that being said, big shout out to LS Solutions. You can find them on eBay for hooking me up with the ECM and the, uh, the connectors. Connectors were 25 bucks. I just threw one across the room. Uh, if you follow me on the Instagram, goatropegarage.com, you might have seen where I ran these things through. Uh, the wife's jewelry cleaner, they look brand freaking new. I mean, they turned out great. And I've gone ahead and marked them with which one they are because C2 and C3 in particular are the same size connector. One is gray, one is black. And of course, C1 is the blue connector that everybody is aware of. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard to discern the other ones because they are all three different sizes. Then on top of it, I've gone through and gotten the pinouts for the two and lined everything up so I've got a guide to tell me where to go. So we're going to go one pin by one pin starting with C1 of the E67 uh, uh, ECM and we're just going to find out which one it is on here. So we start on pin 7 which is C113 of the existing harness and we're just going to work the way down the list. So I'm not going to bore you with a lot of that stuff. I did the depinning of these connectors last night. Uh, I'm going to cut to that where I talk about how to depin these out the front side that keeps you from damaging the retainers on this. The retainers, I highlight what the retainers are. They're little plastic uh, uh, catches that hold the pins in place. I highlight what those are. Uh, so if you're doing something like this, be very careful. If you break one of those, the pin will not be retained. Then on top of it, we're going to have to fish all these wires through both the gasket that keeps these things weather tight, and then of course the back plate. So that's something else to keep in mind as you go through this process. You don't want to get all of this done and then realize you forgot to run the wires through this stuff. But the idea behind it is we should be able to depin all these one by one, run them through the back plate and the rubber gasket, land them where they're supposed to go. And then whenever we're all said and done, we should be able to hook up to it, program it through SPS. And then we're gonna have a couple sensors uh, like cam position stuff that's gonna fault most likely, uh, but we'll deal with that. We just wanna see if we can get the thing running for now. But as I said, I've got a lot of work ahead of me. You can see the harness hanging down there in a terrible, uncomfortable position where I'm basically gonna be sitting on my butt for a couple hours. I'm not gonna bore you with all of that stuff, but I will jump back to the camera whenever I get done. Okay, uh, shooting this video kind of the night before because I wanted to get these disassembled and show you the process of depinning these. There are very, very, very small holes that you see along this edge. Theoretically, if you had the correct tool that Delphi makes, it's about $100. You could put it in those holes and it disengages these pins, but first you have to disassemble the top side, which is pretty simple. Uh, keep a couple of these uh, picks around. They make your life a lot easier. You can get them at Harbor Freight for just a couple bucks for a four pack, but really helps on disassembling things like this. And then we've got a zip tie underneath here. And I'm gonna show you kind of the easy way of doing this. Spread these things out, make some room, because we're gonna take this black liner on the back side out and generally you can kind of come in here with a pick and pop be careful you don't want to break it might might have better luck with the right angle pick here there we go we've lifted the back side of that we'll kind of pull up on it now we'll do the front side let me turn this so you possibly see what's going on get up underneath here like so Find that lip, there we go, lift it and push. Okay, so now both sides should be kind of separated here. 
and you'll see that there's kind of a gap here now we'll try and push it out looks like the backside may just sat back down there we go so we should be completely separated should be able to start working this down your wires you got to kind of straighten these things out so you can work down the wires you see this green one here that's crossed over that's causing an issue so straighten all these out kind of comb them out straight and watch these blue uh, pin deletes that are in here those will start to fall out so make sure you're somewhere where those get caught as they start to take a dump and every once in a while there's going to be some twisted wires in here it's even worse on this one where you see these are purposefully twisted probably analog signals they've got to have some twist to cancel out just kind of work them around we're trying not to break any things I've already broken one of these tabs here but it shouldn't be too bad we should be able to get everything clipped back together nicely there we go now she's coming apart and we turn it upside down we can shake all the blue pins out we'll set those aside save those for later whenever we start rebuilding our harness and we have empty pins that we need to fill back in and your connector may or may not have these blue pins so don't freak out if it doesn't some of them have uh, spots in it already that are blocked off so we'll just start pulling some of these out to make it a little bit easier now that we've got enough space and so we're basically here's those twisted wires I was talking about I have to untwist these these are analog signals as I said we're going to depin this out the front because it's a little bit easier and it's a little less damaging to the connector itself in order to do that we've got to get these parts kind of out of the way uh, because we're going to be pushing these wires through here in a second you'll see what I mean because there's a little pin or a little clip on these wires that holds them in the harness and you can back them out once you get this out of the way this piece in particular theoretically you can back it out through this piece but I found it's pretty hard to get them to work out that way even with the proper tools but if you were set on doing that you could this is just the easier way that I found of taking a connector apart so we've got that piece now down inside is this rubber piece and that's kind of what makes it weather tight we're going to try and work that piece out get it out of the way should come up pretty easily because it has some flexibility just take your time pull it up a little piece at a time using your probes like so we're going to end up feeding our new wires through this whenever we go to repin this harness your alternative would be to just cut all these off and use solder, you know, solder heat shrink joints on it, which we're going to do on some of them because we're going to have to add a couple circuits that didn't exist previously to this. So let's get this separated. And then once you get it down enough, you can just start pulling the individual wires through to make it easy, like so. Now that we've got that out of the way, we want to focus on this black piece here. And it just kind of pries up from the ends. There's a couple tabs that if you look down in here, we're going to pry up like so. It just popped loose on that side. There we go. We popped loose on both sides. So now we should be able to kind of work it out, get it out of the way. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, here comes the important part. The pins are retained on the outside. There's little black plastic teeth. I don't know if you're going to be able to really see them in there very well. We normally would push that away from the pin so we could pull the wire out the back side. But since we've taken this piece off, we can actually feed the wires through. And you'll see what I'm talking about. If you take one of these pins like this and kind of move it away, you should be able to that should be this purple stripe there we go push it through like this and we can just grab the wires and pull them through the side and that means the retention pins the plastic clips that hold these in place were not bending on those possibly breaking those because if you break that whenever you go to repin this connector it's not going to hold a pin and that's probably the worst thing that can happen so it's just a safer practice to come in here 
kind of massage these things over. Sometimes you might have to use both hands where you're pushing and pulling a pin over at the same time, but you should be able to eventually work them through just like that and then grab a hold of them and pull them all the way through. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of these two harnesses or these two connectors and then I'm going to run these things through the cleaner. And I'll take you over to the cleaner real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. So here I've got the wife's ultrasonic jewelry cleaner and I'm actually using a little bit of the gym and jewelry cleaner. I've ran this harness through already. I mean, this thing looks like it's brand new from the factory. Cleaned up so nicely, letting this stuff kind of air dry out and I mean, just look how well that turned out. So I'm going to do the same thing for the other two connectors, get those cleaned up, and then we will dive into uh, swapping it out on the car. Okay, so this is not the most comfortable working location, but I got C1 done. Ran into kind of a little snag, being that the connectors or the pins on the old harness are a round like barrel style, style connector as opposed to the square uh, connectors that are on the new one. So luckily I saved all of my uh, wires whenever I deep pin the harness. So I'm still having those. The other issue is I, I just can't solder anymore. I've got trimmers, uh, so I just can't do it. So I've been using uh, these really nice uh, butt splices. I mean, these things cost me out the butt. I was, they're by Morris. Uh, they're part number 12142. They're just amazing little butt splices and of course using the proper tool uh, they work great tub test passes and then I'm putting some heat shrink around them to uh, make the joints weather tight that's about all I can do unfortunately for now but at the same time it allows me to expend, extend the harness out a little bit uh, which will actually help because it's pretty tight underneath here and we're having to move wires from one harness over to the other so it's having the extra length will make it easier to clean up with some loom afterwards uh, but that being said, as I said, C1's done. This is just kind of like whenever you're cutting wood. You want to measure twice, cut once. This one, you want to count twice before you insert the pin so you don't have to go back and depin uh, because it can be quite a hassle to have to depin, you know, obviously. But so just kind of wanted to give you an update. One down, two to go. Uh, unfortunately, the one that is down is the smaller one, but it has a lot of the wires. So. We're, we're just rocking and rolling, moving on to C2. So I'll catch you up whenever I get done with it. Well, there we have it. We have an E67 swapped out. It's not the prettiest thing ever, but I haven't cleaned it up yet either. So uh, took about six hours, maybe a little bit longer to do all this. I'm about to plug the battery in and see if smoke flies out of this thing. That's about all that we can hope for right now. So let's hook that up. Let me move the camera over so you guys can watch it as I plug the battery back in. Maybe I should get the fire extinguisher nearby. What do you think? Well, the good news is it didn't instantly go up in flames. So, rock and roll. Okay, so that is kind of the swap. I cut a lot of it out because it's not the most entertaining stuff. Uh, I did have one snafu where I had to go back in, unpin a whole row on uh, C2, which is where probably 80% of the wires are, and move them over one because I got off at the beginning of it. But at least I caught it beforehand. Uh, other than that, everything looks good. Whenever I got done, the remaining wires were the ones I were expecting. Uh, in particular, uh, they were uh, the ones for the wideband O2 sensors, which the new ECM obviously does not support. So now it is time to try and hook up uh, with Tech2 and uh, SPS, basically. We're going to be using the VX Diag. I did a video on that recently. I'll throw a link up in the corner. Uh, but next is to hook up with SPS, download a configuration for an XLRV into it, and then uh, connect up to it with HP tuners after that, pull it out. There's gonna be a couple check engine lights right off the bat. I'm not worried about that. Uh, it should still run with those check engine lights. There's gonna be some stuff around the camshafts, the variable camshafts on this thing. Uh, I have a sneaking suspicion either the cam sensors or the cam actuators aren't gonna work. There are different part numbers between uh, the 
XL, well, the 2006 XLR and the 2007 XLR, because basically the reference voltage went from 12 volts down to 5 volts. Uh, so these sensors are going to be expecting 12 volts to turn them on, but they're also uh, three wire sensors, which means they are powered up and then they output a signal separate. Two wire sensors use uh, the resistance on the circuit to read what's going on. That's kind of like what we use on uh, the analog inputs for wide bands and stuff like that. That is in milliamps generally. Uh, these being three wire circuits are going to be, uh, you know, zero to one volts or one to five volts. So they may actually work. I don't know yet. They're, they're expecting 12 volts to power on, but they might power up with five volts. We'll find out. Uh, as I said, it, we're going to get some check engine lights on the front O2 sensors because I still have the wide bands in there. Haven't gotten around to getting some narrow bands to swap those out. But nonetheless, six hours later, it's ugly. I'll clean it up after the fact. I don't want to bundle everything back up. Just have to turn around and uh, take things apart if I have to move some pins around because I messed something up. So it's better to just kind of leave it hanging for now until we get this thing started. So that being said, uh, make sure and keep your eyes peeled. I'm shooting the next episode right now, but you're not going to see it for a couple days. This is enough content for one video, so stick around. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see. People do this kind of stuff all the time. This isn't anything new. It's a little bit different because we're doing a swap on a platform that already had an ECM. A lot of guys are adding ECMs or stuff like that. So this is this is new, but this is part of the process. This is the first step that allows us to start tuning Project Country Club. Speaking of which, make sure to check out the merch link. We have the new shirts out. I'll try and put a uh, one of the shirts over here somewhere so you can see the new shirts, but check out the merch store. There's a link down in the description. You can get your own Project Country Club shirt. All proceeds go to, uh, you know, Project Country Club. And if somebody wants to buy me a Max Jack uh, for Christmas so I can raise this thing up and not have to sit on the ground, I'm getting too old for this stuff. ABT, guys.